Multicellularity represents a significant step in evolution, transitioning life from simple, single-celled organisms to complex, multicellular beings. This trait evolved independently several times in various groups of life, such as animals, plants, fungi, and some algae. Multicellularity involves individual cells coming together and operating as a coordinated unit, each performing specific functions for the organism. Emerging around 1.5 billion years ago, multicellularity transformed life on Earth by enabling cells to specialize. In a multicellular organism, cells divide roles similar to sports teams where each player has a unique responsibility. For example, in animals, muscle cells handle movement, nerve cells transmit signals, and reproductive cells manage reproduction. In plants, some cells carry out photosynthesis, others provide structural support, and certain cells transport water and nutrients. Multicellularity allowed organisms to become far more complex, evolving specialized tissues and organs that perform unique tasks. Animals, for instance, developed organs such as hearts, brains, and stomachs. Plants evolved roots, stems, and leaves, each specialized for absorbing nutrients, structural support, and capturing sunlight respectively. Fungi formed multicellular structures like mushrooms to aid in reproduction. The complexity enabled by multicellularity also supported the evolution of intricate systems essential for survival. Plants developed vascular systems to transport water and nutrients efficiently, allowing them to grow taller and thrive in dense environments. By occupying distinct roles, these organisms shaped interactions between species, leading to the formation of predator-prey relationships, symbiotic partnerships, and competition-driven evolution. Photosynthesis is one of the most important biological innovations in Earth's history. It's the process that allows plants, algae, and some bacteria to turn sunlight into food. Without it, we wouldn't have oxygen to breathe or food to eat. Seriously, no photosynthesis means no life as we know it. This evolutionary trait first appeared in bacteria over 3 billion years ago with cyanobacteria being the early adopter. These tiny microbes started using sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to produce energy as a byproduct. They released oxygen. Over millions of years, this oxygen slowly transformed Earth's atmosphere, making it breathable for future life forms and paving the way for more complex organisms. In plants, photosynthesis happens mainly in the leaves, specifically inside little structures called chloroplasts. These chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, the green pigment that captures sunlight. When light hits a leaf, it's like flipping on a factory. Carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil are converted into glucose, which the plant uses as food with oxygen getting released into the air as a bonus. What's wild is how this one process powers almost every ecosystem on the planet. Plants feed herbivores. Herbivores feed carnivores. Even decomposers ultimately trace their energy back to sunlight captured by plants. It's all connected through photosynthesis. Photosynthesis also enables plants to grow bigger and more complex over time. With a steady energy source, plants evolved roots, stems, and leaves to gather sunlight, water, and nutrients more efficiently. Forests formed, land animals followed, ecosystems exploded with new life, and photosynthesis doesn't stop with plants. Algae in the ocean are responsible for producing up to half of the world's oxygen. That means every second breath you take likely came from ocean algae, not trees. Sexual reproduction is a method of producing offspring that involves the combination of genetic material from two parent organisms. Unlike asexual reproduction, which produces genetically identical copies, sexual reproduction mixes DNA to create a new, unique individual. In most sexually reproducing species, each parent contributes half of the offspring's genetic information through specialized reproductive cells. In animals, this means sperm and egg. In plants, it's pollen and ovules. When these cells combine during fertilization, they form a zygote, a new organism with a blend of traits from both parents. The key advantage of sexual reproduction is genetic diversity. This constant shuffling of DNA allows populations to adapt more easily to changing environments. It helps organisms fight off disease, survive environmental stress, and avoid problems caused by harmful genetic mutations. It's like rolling the dice every generation. Some combinations will be better suited to survival than others. This process also led to the evolution of complex behaviors. Many animals have evolved rituals or displays to attract mates. 
Think of birds singing, or deer locking antlers, or fireflies blinking in rhythm. Even underwater, sexual reproduction shows up in fascinating ways. Coral reefs rely on mass spawning events where thousands of coral release eggs and sperm into the water at the same time. Some fish even change sex during their lifetime to maximize the reproductive potential. Sexual reproduction also explains why many species have two sexes or mating types. These biological differences help ensure that genes get mixed and passed on efficiently. Over time, these roles have shaped everything from anatomy to behavior. Sexual reproduction increases a population's ability to survive, adapt, and evolve. And that's why this method dominates most of the planet and animal kingdoms today. Sexual reproduction is a powerful force in the history of life. It drives diversity, fuels adaptation, and plays a key role in shaping the wide range of species we see across the planet. Eyesight is the ability to detect and interpret light, allowing organisms to perceive the world around them. It may seem ordinary today, but the evolution of eyes was one of the most impactful biological developments. With eyesight, animals gain the power to sense movement, identify predators or prey, and navigate their environment more effectively. The earliest eyes were simple, just light-sensitive cells grouped together on the skin. These primitive eye spots couldn't form images, but they could detect changes in light, helping early life forms distinguish day from night or sense the shadow of a nearby threat. Over time, these basic sensors became more sophisticated. Structures evolved to bend and focus light, eventually forming the camera-like eyes seen in many animals today, such as insects, birds, and humans. Some of the most complex eyes belong to creatures like octopuses and mantis shrimp. Octopuses have excellent vision with camera-type eyes similar to ours. Mantis shrimp can detect polarized light and see a wider range of colors than humans, including ultraviolet. These visual adaptations give animals massive survival advantages, whether it's finding food, avoiding danger, or communicating through visual signals. Eyes also played a major role in driving evolutionary change. During the Cambrian explosion around 540 million years ago, the development of eyesight triggered an evolutionary arms race. Predators evolved sharper vision to hunt more effectively, while prey developed better camouflage, speed, or defensive traits to escape. This sudden burst of evolutionary innovation led to a huge rise in biodiversity. Different types of eyes evolved to suit different environments. Deep-sea creatures often have large eyes to capture even the faintest light. Nocturnal animals, like owls, have adapted to low-light conditions with specialized retinas. Insects have compound eyes made from many small lenses, giving them an almost 360-degree view perfect for spotting movement quickly. Whether it's an eagle spotting prey from a mile away or a tiny insect dodging a swat, vision continues to shape life in profound and fascinating ways. Flight is the ability to move through air by generating lift and overcoming gravity. It evolved independently in several groups of animals, including insects, birds, bats, and even some extinct reptiles like pterosaurs. With flight, these animals gained access to new environments, escape routes, and food sources that ground dwellers couldn't reach. The earliest flyers were insects, which took to the skies over 300 million years ago. Their wings evolved from extensions of the exoskeleton, and their small size and lightweight bodies made flight possible. Insects like dragonflies and butterflies became great at aerial movement, using flight to find food, escape predators, and locate mates over large distances. Later, vertebrae evolved flight through entirely different adaptations. Pterosaurus were the first vertebrae to fly, with wings formed from a membrane stretched over a long finger. Birds came next, evolving feathers and lightweight bones that made flight more efficient. Their wings, formed from modified forelimbs, allowed them to glide, hover, and soar through the skies. Millions of years later, mammals joined the airborne ranks with bats whose wings are made from stretched skin over elongated fingers. Flight opened up vast new opportunities of survival. Animals that could fly could avoid ground predators, travel long distances to find food, and explore new habitats. Birds used flight to migrate thousands of miles, spreading to every continent. Bats used it to hunt insects at night using echolocation. Even the ancestors of flightless birds like ostriches and penguins used to be able to fly. This ability also led to the evolution of specialized body features, hollow bones for reduced weight, strong chest muscles for wing movement, and keen senses for navigation. Feathers became essential tools for controlling flight. Insects developed complex wing patterns and behaviors that helped them communicate, evade predators, 
or blend into their surroundings. Flight isn't just a physical adaptation. It changed how species interact with the world. Pollinating insects like bees help plants reproduce. Birds spread seeds and shape ecosystems. Flying animals have even inspired human inventions. From gliders to airplanes, hair and fur are defining characteristics of mammals made from a protein called keratin, which is also found in nails, hooves, and feathers. While hair might seem like a simple trait, its evolution was very important for survival, behavior, and ecological success. Hair offers multiple advantages, ranging from temperature control to communication and even defense. One of the most important functions of hair and fur is insulation. By trapping a layer of air close to the skin, fur helps regulate body temperature. This ability to stay warm in cold environments and cool in hot ones gave mammals an edge over reptiles and other cold-blooded animals. Species like polar bears, arctic foxes, and snow leopards rely on their thick fur to endure freezing conditions, while desert-dwelling animals often have lighter, thinner coats to reflect sunlight and stay cool. Hair isn't just about staying warm, it can be a tool for camouflage. In the wild, blending into the environment can mean the difference between life and death. Zebras use their stripes to confuse predators, and snowshoe hares change coat color with the seasons, brown in summer, white in winter. These adaptations help animals evade predators and sneak up on prey more effectively. Hair also serves as a communication tool. Raised hair can signal fear or aggression, like when a cat arches its back and puffs up. Color patterns can send social cues or attract mates. The mane of a male lion signals maturity and strength to both potential rivals and partners. Skunks, on the other hand, use bold black and white fur as a warning. Stay away or risk getting sprayed. Whiskers, or vibrissae, are another specialized form of hair. These sensitive hairs help animals navigate their environment. Cats use whiskers to measure gaps. Seals use them to detect the movement of fish and rodents rely on them to explore tight, dark tunnels. Hair has even evolved into defensive structures. Porcupines, for example, have modified hairs that form sharp quills. These are effective deterrents against predators, and some mammals, like hedgehogs, roll into a spiky ball when threatened using their hair as a physical barrier. In early human evolution, hair played roles in both protection and communication. Body hair helped protect against the sun and environmental hazards, while scalp and facial hair served social or sexual signaling purposes. Over time, as humans developed clothing and shelter, hair's insulating role has diminished, but it never lost its biological and social significance. From heat regulation and camouflage to sensory input and expression, this seemingly simple trait plays a complex and crucial role in survival. Language and communication are evolutionary traits that allow organisms to share information using sound, gestures, sense, body language, and in humans, complex spoken and written language. While communication exists in many animal species, the depth and complexity of human language sets it apart as a defining feature of our species. In its earliest forms, communication likely began with simple signals. A sudden noise might have warned of danger, or a visual display could have helped attract a mate. Over time, these signals evolved. Today, animals use a wide variety of methods to communicate. Prairie dogs can warn others about predators with chirps that even convey details like size and speed. Vervet monkeys use distinct alarm calls depending on whether the threat is a leopard, eagle, or snake. Bees, too, showcase impressive nonverbal communication. Through a wiggle dance, a forager bee can tell the rest of the hive exactly where to find nectar sources indicating both direction and distance. Wolves use posture, tail position, and facial expressions to establish social order, while cuttlefish can change skin color in seconds to signal mood or mating readiness. But human communication took this basic ability to a whole new level. We use sounds to represent objects, actions, and ideas. We combine these symbols according to grammatical rules to create meaning. We can talk about things not present, describe abstract concepts, or share imagined scenarios. No other species does this with our level of complexity. Language helped early humans coordinate hunts, teach tool use, and share warnings about dangers. Cultural knowledge could be passed down instead of being relearned every generation. Communication is not limited to speech. Sign language uses hands, face, and body movements with the same complexity as spoken language. 
tone of voice, facial expression, and even silence can carry meaning. In fact, most of our communication is nonverbal. Language and communication have not only helped us survive, they've helped us build civilizations, express creativity, and connect across cultures. Jaws are one of the most significant evolutionary adaptations in vertebra history. A jaw is a bony or cartilaginous structure that enables animals to bite, chew, grasp, and manipulate food. Before jaws evolved, most early animals could only feed by filtering small particles or absorbing nutrients. The development of jaws revolutionized feeding strategies, allowing animals to become active predators and take advantage of a much wider range of food sources. The earliest jawless vertebrates, known as agnathans, appeared over 500 million years ago. These creatures lacked biting structures and relied on suction or filtration to feed. Jaws are believed to have evolved around 430 million years ago from the front gill arches. Over time, these arches shifted forward and became hinged, giving rise to the first primitive jaws. This transformation marked a dramatic shift in vertebra evolution. With jaws, vertebrates could bite, hold on to prey, and tear flesh or plants. This allowed for more efficient feeding and more diverse diets. Jawed vertebrates rapidly diversified, leading to the evolution of sharks, bony fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Sharks developed powerful toothy jaws that can generate teeth continuously. Their bite is both strong and flexible, allowing them to catch slippery prey. Some bony fish evolved jaws that can extend outward to create a vacuum, sucking in prey in an instant. Mammals took jaw development even further, evolving precise tooth alignment and strong jaw muscles that allow them to grind, chew, and process food thoroughly, which helps to make digestion easier. Jaws are not only important for feeding, but also play roles in defense and social behavior. Crocodiles use their powerful jaws both for hunting and fighting. Primates, including humans, use jaw movement in facial expressions and speech. In many species, jaw size and strength can be a signal of dominance, influencing mating success. Jaws also reshaped the skull and allowed for more complex facial structures. In mammals, the evolution of the jaw was linked to the development of the middle ear. Bones that once formed part of the jaw joint migrated and became part of the hearing apparatus, improving hearing ability. Lungs are specialized internal organs that allow animals to extract oxygen from air and expel carbon dioxide, two essential processes for energy production and survival. The evolution of lungs made life on land possible for vertebrates, helping animals move beyond aquatic habitats and into dry land. Before lungs, many early life forms relied on simple diffusion or gills to absorb oxygen from water. However, water doesn't hold as much oxygen as air, and aquatic environments often experience fluctuations in oxygen levels. The earliest lungs developed in fish living in low-oxygen freshwater habitats. These primitive lungs began as air sacs that allowed fish to gulp air from the surface and extract oxygen more efficiently when water oxygen was scarce. Over time, these air sacs evolved into more sophisticated structures, capable of supporting an animal's entire oxygen demand. Amphibians, like frogs, inherited these basic lungs and still often rely partly on their skin for breathing. Reptiles took it further, evolving larger lungs. Birds developed one of the most efficient respiratory systems in the animal kingdom, with air sacs and a one-way flow of air that maximizes oxygen absorption, an adaption that supports the high energy demands of flight. In mammals, lungs are complex, sponge-like organs that house millions of tiny air sacs called alveoli. These alveoli are where the critical gas exchange happens, and as oxygen moves into the blood, carbon dioxide moves out. Lungs didn't just enable animals to breathe, they also paved the way for a range of evolutionary possibilities. Animals with lungs could grow larger, become more active, and travel farther. This led to the evolution of high-speed runners, burrowers, climbers, and flyers. The transition to land allowed vertebrates to exploit new food sources, avoid aquatic predators, and eventually colonize every continent. Some animals even have dual respiratory systems. Lungfish, for instance, can breathe through both gills and lungs, allowing them to survive in dried-up ponds by breathing air directly. Sea turtles and some snakes have developed the ability to hold their breath for extended periods, allowing them to hunt or migrate underwater. Lungs also influence vocalization. Many animals use air pushed from the lungs to create sound. In humans, this forms the basis of speech. Birds have a lung structure called sirenexes, which allow for complex songs. Frogs inflate vocal sacs with air from their lungs to produce mating calls. 
From ancient waters to open skies, the development of lungs tell a story that took millions of years, with it being one of the most interesting aspects of animal evolution. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you would like to see part 2 or more videos like this one. Thanks again. Goodbye.